Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a series covering the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses that contribute to their success here in Hawaii. A collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration, the Hawaii Business Development Center, the Patsy Mink Center, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the, of the Pacific. I'm Sandra Cancino's Public Affairs for the Hawaii District Office of SBA. We're celebrating Small Business Week, and in honor of that, we have asked one of our Young Entrepreneur of the Year awardees to join us to talk to Sori. Zach Berry is co-founder of Banan. Zach, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Sandra. So it's been four years since Banan has came about and mm -hmm. has expanded all the way to Japan. Can you tell me a little bit about how Banan came about? Yeah, so Banan was started by four friends from high school, myself, mm -hmm. Matt Hong, Luke Unterman, and Galen McCleary. Mm -hmm. Um, we all went to high school together here at Punahou, and after going off to different universities all over the country, we uh, started talking when it was senior year and really just had this spirit of entrepreneurship. We didn't know exactly what we wanted to do, uh, but we wanted to do something and we wanted to do it together. Um, so really, uh, we just started talking in the middle of senior year. We had all these very grand ideas, not even in the food space, in tech, we were talking about a crowdfunding platform for nonprofit and a lot of things that were way above our skill level at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bonan actually started as a joke around the dinner table as we were working on these other ideas um, in Santa Cruz. Um, one of Galen's cousins, um, her friend, was making this recipe at home. Mm -hmm. It was delicious, and we tried it. And uh, yeah, immediately with the simplicity of the product. Um, so it became this ongoing joke around the dinner table, like, oh, this, this other idea doesn't work out. We can become the Jamba Juice of banana ice cream. Uh, and when things started going south with the other idea, we started doing a bit more research and found out that Hawaii is the only state that commercially grows and sells bananas mm -hmm. in the whole United States. And uh, that's when it really started hitting home for us. Um, the idea had a bit more depth to it than just some silly product. We could mm -hmm. come home, do business in the local community, um, be supporting local agriculture, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, really just have a tangible product that we could start on right away. So as you know, uh, well, the research that I've done, um, it's a non-dairy product. So what was the inspiration or reason behind banana non-dairy product for your, for your brand? Yeah, you know, it wasn't a choice, this or that. It was we just stumbled upon this product that was actually pretty classically famous in the vegan world. None of us are vegans, but it's one of the ways <laughs> vegans make ice cream. Yeah. Um, the natural viscosity of bananas is just really smooth and creamy. Bananas are naturally kind of bland, so mm -hmm. it provides this really nice base to then create flavors off of. Um, and I have to say, our, our passion after three years has grown um, for being part of this kind of plant-based food movement. Um, it's a really exciting time to be in food and we find that a lot of the workers we attract are also very passionate about plant-based food. Um, last week, huge news came out um, that this plant-based meat company, Beyond Meat, had one of the biggest IPOs since 2000. Um, yeah. It went public from, yeah. like, came out at like 25 and Closed at like 68, uh, which for us is it, it's a huge signal that people yeah. are starting to pay attention to what they eat and wanting to make changes. So we're really excited to be part of the movement and stoked on our timing as well. So it's, it, it sounds like you're very conscious of what you put in your product and uh, being um, a source of locally grown uh, farms and, and food. So mm -hmm. what inspired the table to farm uh, model that you use for your company? Yeah, well, one was the main ingredient, which is bananas. We source currently about 6,000 pounds of bananas a week to supply our four retail locations mm -hmm. on Oahu. And for us, growing up in Hawaii, you're ultra conscious that 80% okay. um, of our food is being imported. and the food miles are just ridiculous, like yeah. how far that food travels before it gets to Hawaii. So for us, we had this product fit that's almost just like the perfect model for trying to do things as local as possible. So mm -hmm. our bananas are sourced from Sugarland Farms on Oahu. 
We source a lot of our toppings locally, pineapple from Maui, macadamia nuts from the Big Island. Um, we do some dry bananas from Molokai, as well as source from a lot of other small farms on the island. Out of Waimanalo, we work with Yo Garden, Paul Isaac's farm, and source turmeric from there. So yeah, it's been a really fun exploration for us into the agriculture and food that's available. So besides on using um, local ingredients and local farms to produce your, your product, um, you rely heavy on being, uh, being conscious about sustainability uh, for, your, for your company and for the islands. So how do you put that, incorporate that into um, after the use of all the products that you've done? And I read there that you, you, know, you use the banana peels to feed um, exactly. things at, at other farms. Yeah, you can imagine um, if we're peeling 6,000 pounds of bananas, we're left with a lot of banana peels, mm -hmm. a lot of food waste. And um, my Co-founder Matt, he's not here today, but he coined this term early on in business, um, table to farm. So mm -hmm. on the flip side of farm to table, um, it's also just as important to think about where that food waste is going to. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, there's a couple of different ways we deal with that. Um, the majority of our fruit waste is picked up by pig farmers. Mm -hmm. um, we use it to feed their pigs. And then other portions of it are used by small farmers who are composting that food waste bringing it back into nutrient-rich soil and are able to grow even more food with it. Um, and yeah, it's been cool even since starting business four years ago to see all the other businesses who are also yeah. uh, doing similar things. So going back to being uh, expanding to Japan, how did that come about? What made you go to Japan and, and uh, mm -hmm. are you using the same models out there? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, living in Hawaii, obviously, there's just that very strong connection Japanese people yeah. love here. They're, a lot of our tourists are Japanese. Um, and our kind of first location we started out on, on Montserrat Ave, the food truck at the base of Diamond Head, mm -hmm. would attract a lot of hikers coming down. Um, and then our third location in Waikiki, we also have a ton of Japanese tourists. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the momentum started to build over time. We attracted a lot of different Japanese magazines and even a couple famous Japanese celebrities who ate at our spot. And um, last summer, we were invited to do a fair called the Hankyu Festival. Mm -hmm. um, it happens in July in Japan. About 50 brands from Hawaii are brought up and able to showcase their products for just a week. Um, so yeah, we gave it a shot, went up there, probably had best week of sales we've had in the entire life of our business. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we were up there, the partners that helped us with the food operations um, got talking to us, and they were very interested in helping us bring the concept over there. Mm -hmm. And immediately there was this connection. They were also young, um, looking to do something fun and innovative and kind of change the way Japanese people think. So things clicked, and... We ended up opening the store just a month and a half later in Yokohama. And this past, um, this past year, we went up again and opened up a second store in oh. Osaka. Oh, awesome. Um, but just like Hawaii, um, as we're expanding abroad, um, that idea of using produce that's as local as possible is still incredibly important to us. Okay. And, um, in Japan, unfortunately, there weren't enough bananas that we could source in Okinawa in the south. So mm -hmm. me, myself, Luke, and another employee had ventured out before the store opened to the Philippines and met with this co-op of 3,000 banana farmers and traveled around like deep into the jungle and mm -hmm. found this awesome source of bananas. That, and that's bananas that are being used in our Japan stores. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit how you be, uh, came up with the recipes and what type of flavors do you have at uh, your location? Yeah, so the original banana flavor, yeah. it really is just made out of bananas, mm -hmm. um, incredibly simple. And um, off of that, we kind of have a theme of using like fresh and wholesome ingredients. So we'll have acai, lily koi. Mm -hmm. um, one of our first favorite flavors was the greens flavor. It's like a ginger, mint, kale, and spirulina. More of a healthy flavor. We have a turmeric and olena flavor. 
And then in the past year or two, we've also ventured into some more desserty fun flavors. So one of our more popular ones is a chocolate macadamia nut um, banana flavor, and then as well peanut butter. Oh, but yeah, that's one of the fun parts about our job is just yeah. experimenting and creating new recipes. That's awesome. So um, being young entrepreneurs and just starting fresh uh, here in the islands, uh, what were some of the challenges that you had uh, opening up your business and how did you go about it? Where, where did you seek any um, information or any assistance in trying to mm. put out what you had envisioned in, in, your, in your company? Yeah, we certainly, we jumped into this business right out of graduating. We were just four months out of graduating college mm -hmm. and uh, certainly didn't have any business experience. And I can remember it being tough to even communicate with suppliers and have them trust us just because of our age as we we're trying to set up our, our supply chain um, and source ingredients from around the island that... Yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit hesitant in the beginning, yeah. um, just because we didn't have any credibility yet. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And the resources that were available, uh -huh. um, both Luke and myself grew up in small business families. So uh, Luke's mom and dad started Pictures Plus, which is now Plus Interiors. Yeah. Um, so they've been incredible mentors to us. And my parents um, have been in the bead business. They own Beat It for the past 20 27 years uh, with a few different retail locations all around the island. So we both grew up in a small business family and definitely knew what it took. Those were a lot of the discussions around the dinner table. Um, and besides that, yeah, we've been pretty good about just reaching out into the community and learning from people. I think that's one of the advantages of um, going into business as a young entrepreneur is that, yeah, people are incredibly willing to offer their advice and help. Okay, so um, doing the startup uh, portion of your company, any challenges for any licenses that you needed, anything that you thought you didn't need but ended up ha having to have, any, any barriers or, or um, things of that nature for, or for a food truck or for location in the mall or for you know, uh, having to talk to UH for the location up in, in university? Any, any challenges in that? Yeah, so I mean, although we came back with a product that we loved, um, when we got back to Hawaii in August 2014, um, we didn't have a super clear direction of the vehicle that our, our, our business would take. We weren't sure if we were going to hop into a farmer's market, head straight into a brick and mortar store, do a food truck. And the food truck actually just popped up spontaneously on Craigslist. And we went out and checked it out one day in Waipahu. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was a pretty, pretty memorable story. It was the four of us drove out there with this um, family friend who pretty much wheels and deals cars on Craigslist for a living. So he was checking out the truck for us. Um, and it was listed for $5,000. Um, but he was able to bargain it down to just $2,000. And he kind of huddled us up and just asked, like, all right, are you guys ready? And we all like, yeah. took out our 500 bucks. Um, and bought this truck. It was a 1977 Love's Bakery food truck um, with this three-foot stick shifter. And we drove it back to my parents' house and started working on it for the next month. Um, and at that point, we still didn't even know where we were going to park it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't even have a location picked out. I ended up finding this Craigslist listing for uh, this empty parking lot on Diamond Head that was actually for sale at the time. Uh, okay. I just called the owner and asked if we would be able to try out our business on there and rent it for a few months. And from that, yeah, one thing just led That's to another cool. and we started gaining some momentum. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, we'll be uh, going to take a break and we'll be right back in one minute. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday. Alive at five. I'll see you there. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at three, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. 
We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back to Small Business and, uh, on Think Tank Hawaii. My guest, Zach Berry, has been telling us about his business, uh, Banan, and how he's expanded and what uh, it took for him and his co-founders to build that business out. Um, just wanted to ask you, um, you've expanded to four different locations, even up to Japan. So where do you see your company going in the future, and what, what objectives do you have for, for Banan? Yeah, as we dream but on into the future, uh, we certainly could see it doing well in markets outside of Oahu and outside of Hawaii. Um, but very important to us is to first investigate supply chain wherever we're going. So bananas are a huge part of our business, uh, and we want to make sure they're coming from a pretty, pretty righteous source. So if we were to go to California, one of the sort of adopted business models we've thought of is that even if the bananas can't be sourced locally and they might have to come from South America, that we could incorporate a lot of the different um, kind of like berries and other produce that California mm -hmm. has to offer into our flavors. And likewise, anywhere we go, another exciting um, area of interest for us is Australia in the mm -hmm. Queensland region. They have a lot of similar agriculture to mm -hmm. Hawaii. Um, so yeah. We've already taken a trip to California this year to kind of check out the landscape and also plan to head to Australia a bit later in the year so to when explore you, that. When you branch out to these uh, different locations, how, how will you be keeping up with your model of table to farm, farm to table? Yeah, so our sort of adopted business model that I was talking about mm -hmm. is that um, certainly we'd like the bananas to come from as close as possible. Um, but as far as flavors go, we would always like the flavors to reflect the agriculture of the locations that we're in. So in Japan, we were able to work with some fun new flavors and toppings like matcha and yuzu and azuki bean. In California, we're excited about the different berries that we can use in our flavors that aren't available in Hawaii. Uh, and somewhere like Australia, we have yet to explore um, what can be available there. But our idea is that if you visit Banan in different places in the world, um, it'll be a reflection of the local agriculture. So uh, expanding and, and having this model of, you know, having sustainability, where do you see yourself or where do you see Banan as a, a, a local and in, in the local and business communities? Um, one thing that my business partners and I have always talked about since the beginning and even wrote it into our business plan is that yeah, we'd love to be uh, inspiration for other young people who want to do something themselves um, to, to show them that they can, they can do it and that you can do it with friends and have fun, have fun with it and not take such a traditional route. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I definitely have been able to talk to and mentor a lot of young people with ideas already and hope to continue doing that into the future. So you're saying you, you mentor um, young entrepreneurs and as yourself a young entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. is there a, do you take a different approach in management styles for your business and, or do you go with the traditional way of things? Um, I know we're in a different generation. We see things differently from what mm -hmm. it used to be in the past. So do you incorporate that at all or do you have any strategies at all for management? Uh, yeah, for absolutely. Um, we have this term called uh, meaningful management. And um, yeah, we'd love to provide a fun and memorable experience mm -hmm. for our employees. And we do that by engaging with them outside of the workplace. Um, one thing we do is we go and visit the local farms that we source produce from, such as our banana farm, or we'll go out and buy manalo and harness turmeric as a group. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll also just go do fun things like one of our company traditions is Makapu sunrise parties. Okay. Um, so I'll wake up really early, brew up some tea, go and surf down at the beach, and 
do a little beach cleanup. Um, and yeah, those just become really great bonding moments and that definitely translates to the culture that you'll feel uh, when you walk inside any, any of our stores. Our employees are all really tight, look at it like a family, and yeah, seem to be having a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. And so um, going from there to, to management style or opening up the businesses um, in different locations, what mistakes have you done in the beginning and what have you learned from them mm -hmm. and what would you do differently? We probably shouldn't talk about not paying GE tax in <laughs> 2016. Yeah. But um, no, I would say that um, one mistake early on um, that we made is not really thinking about putting in the right structure before starting a company. We just thought, oh, we're just all friends and let's just all jump into this yeah. um, without much wise counsel on uh, putting together a good operating agreement. Mm -hmm. um, some people may have tried to tell us maybe we were just so excited to start. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, certainly, like, things in life can change. One of our business partners got another great opportunity and took off. And we all still remain great friends, but just having those structures in place so things are very clear cut um, is definitely something uh, we've taken out of this first venture. So, besides um, coming up with the concept and, and just working together as co founders, or have you? Besides your parents, um, who are small business owners, any outside assistance that you've had or, or tried to mirror in, for your company at all? Yeah, one of our mentors that we always look up to in business is Yvonne Chouinard mm -hmm. of Patagonia. Um, I might butcher it a little, but one thing he says about Patagonia is that they're here to protect the environment and they happen to sell apparel. Um, just that they're a mission-driven business. And in Banan, we kind of have an adopted one um, that we like to say that we're in the business of spreading good vibes and we happen to sell banana ice cream. And yeah, we certainly hope that if you visit one of our restaurants that it's not just that you know, you're coming for the product, that mm -hmm. you're also getting a great experience, a good interaction um, as a customer and come out there feeling a little better uh, than you came in. Okay. And, ha and has a, how has um, Hawaii Small Business Development Center or any uh, SBA assistance or programs have helped you in your company? Yeah, so actually just two years into business, I went up to the Hawaii Business Development Center in Manoa and I was looking for some accounting help and met with Lori up there and she was a huge help in letting me partake in some free accounting hours and um, the counselor there actually turned out to be our accountant today, oh. Kenyatta, of my personal financial CPA. So yeah. we still meet with them every quarter um, to make sure our numbers are in line. Okay. And then as, up as well, another program I'm really excited to be a part of and just got accepted into is the Emerging Leaders Program awesome. put on by Julie Purcell. So okay. I've only had my first class, but I've already met a lot of really cool um, entrepreneurs in Hawaii who are in a variety of industries. So I'm excited to see what I can learn from them. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So as a young entrepreneur, what um, guidance or what advice would you share with uh, somebody who's wanting to open up their own business? Sure. Um, definitely always feels a little cliche to say, but um, really doing something you're passionate about. Um, does make all the difference. Um, for us, we love, we love Banan and the ice cream's great, but we also see it as a very, really fun and mindful platform to talk about our food systems as a systemic issue, about where our food comes from, and how we can educate the youth a little bit more um, to start thinking about these issues. Um, another thing that's fortunate for us is um, working with bunch of buddies with four friends mm -hmm. um, certainly makes the hard days in business a lot better so yeah. I would say yeah passion having a product you're passionate about and then also working with the team that you love are huge in business awesome yeah. so from from beginning to now how has Banan grown how many employees did you start with how, how many do you have now and where do you envision <laughs> it going from a year or two from yeah, we, um, 
So it started as just myself, Matt, Luke, and Galen. We pretty much worked the truck, food mm -hmm. truck ourselves for the first six months of business. And at the time, the idea was that the food truck was just our proof of concept model. Um, but it really proved to be our classroom for business for the first year. It's where we learned how to work with each other as business partners, um, just learned about how to streamline our operation. And then also just, yeah, it was a good testing round to see if our customers liked our product. Okay. Um, from there, we opened up the university the next year through the help of a Kickstarter program and an enormous support from the community. Um, 2017, we opened up in Waikiki, uh, and then December in Gahala Mall. Um, in 2018, that was pretty much about exploration to Japan. And uh, yeah, this summer we're going to be opening up our fifth retail location in Kailua, and we'll be growing to just over 80 employees. Uh, as well, we have like an event truck this year, so we can cater to weddings, different events around the island, and I think that will be a great marketing tool for us. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, I thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing your story. And um, I've had your product at the farmer's market as well, so it was delicious. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. So thank you for joining us today. Um, follow us on Twitter at SBA underscore Hawaii to find all the latest news about our programs and events. Um, we have a location all around uh, the Hawaii Islands. So if you look up at our website as well, uh, sba.gov. Uh, uh, backslash HI, you'll see where you can go and find us out. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.